You were in the organization when he was drafted in 92. When you looked at this skinny kid from Kalamazoo, could you have ever envisioned him being a Hall of Famer? Um, no, I think it was kind of hard for everybody to envision uh, something like that at that time. And the same thing goes for, you know, uh, just about everybody, you know, in, in that uh, situation. When I signed, uh, you know, in, uh, it's probably in, mid in the mid-80s, you know, I started getting, playing in the big leagues in, in 91. I was a skinny kid, about probably about uh, 6'2", 175, 180. And uh, nobody really envisioned that I would have the career that I had, uh, you know, in the big leagues as well. So it's really, really hard to tell. Uh, I think, you know, body-wise, you see, you know, the person uh, evolving and gaining weight and, and getting stronger. But I think, you know, the biggest component of this is his mind, uh, mind frame and his attitude towards the game. And as he uh, is able to make adjustments, through adversity that he will find in his minor league career and then coming into the big leagues, uh, really taking it all in stride and, uh, you know, making sure that he was in the best uh, condition uh, physically and, uh, you know, emotionally to play the game. He had a great support system with his parents, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Charles Jeter and his, uh, obviously his, his mom as well. They were there, and I remember them being there through most of, I mean, probably all of his career. Uh, and I think that, that really helped him a lot, uh, you know, to have that support system that was very solid. Uh, I think it enabled him to, to, you know, not worry too much about distractions and because I, I think he had a lot of people to be accountable to, uh, and it helped him a lot. Uh, nonetheless, I think he, he had an awesome career. He was uh, a great teammate, and he carried the captain role with, uh, you know, the dignity and the and, and, you know, the expectation that everybody would expect from that role. I mean, he he was just a great player, and uh, it well-deserved, you know, him being in the Hall of Fame. Do you have an example on what made him such a great leader? Well, I think, you know, for me, it was the fact that he didn't really spoke that much unless he was called upon to, to talk, and when he did, everybody would listen. I think it was more in the term on, on you know, the same lines of Don Mattingly, you know, the captain before he became a captain uh, in my tenure. Uh, he was more of a leader by example, and I think, you know, uh, his biggest attribute was that he did things during the course of the game that would never be, you know, quantified in any stats, uh, but they were just so uh, important in determining the outcome of the game, you know, to case in point, you know, that, that flip in Oakland, you know, uh, getting uh, uh, Jeremy Jambi in home plate, uh, you know, it's like an unorthodox plant. He had to think outside the box. And he did at a moment that it was so crucial in the game. And his career is it's full of those moments uh, that, you know, you would never see in the stats. But you will, you know, once you start tallying up, you know, he was definitely so, so determined uh, to win and uh, really important in, in, you know, obviously in our success.